joining us now to talk the state of the global economy and emerging markets is Mark Mobius, founding partner at Mobius Capital Partners. And you've been on a couple of times, Mark, recently on, on different shows and different places I've seen you, but I'm hearkening back to some comments I saw you make about um, just where global yields are and the global bond market is. And you were making these comments at the same time that it was, I guess we had just inverted and the recession talk was running fast and furious at that point. And we were looking for, you know, looking into the abyss and, and really looking to see what's going on that, that, that is causing so much uh, angst and, and trepidation. And, and you just were simply saying, I think this, the equity markets globally are gonna do well because interest rates are so low. And it was like, wow, that almost seems too simple. Do you still feel <laughs> that way? Yeah. I still do. I, in fact, I feel more strongly about it now because people are talking about uh, treasuries going to zero interest rates. So, I mean, if that's the case, where do you hide? Uh, and what I think is that people are going to start looking for yield. Uh, companies that have dividends that pay a yield. Uh, that's one thing. And the other thing they're going to look for, for safety, given what's happening between the U.S. and China, they're going to be looking for gold. So I think those are the two places where you have to hide, so to speak from the current uh, situation. Okay. Let me just tell you how, how I would worry about that. The, the zero interest rates are forecasting some type of global slowdown. So all the big yield stocks, their businesses are going to go in the tank. They're not going to be able to cover the dividend. Uh, and, and whatever you made in yield, you're going to lose in principle when the stocks go down to recession lows. So that, that doesn't make sense. Why won't that happen? No, that's right. I think most of the stocks will be in the scenario that you just described. But there will be stocks that will continue to make money. I'm not saying that growth is going to be huge, but they'll continue to struggle along and pay dividends. There won't be many, but there will be these stocks that you've got to identify, which is what we're doing now. We're looking very closely at which companies can survive uh, this kind of global slowdown. And by the way, I don't think it'll be uh, universally s global slowdown. I think some companies will continue to do well and some countries will continue to do well. And those are the ones you've got to identify. That's why it's kind of a free-for-all now. We're looking everywhere where we can find these kinds of companies. It's not going to be easy. We, uh, and this, anything we're doing is in, with the backdrop of uh, the trade tensions with China and, and really around the, uh, the other countries as well for the United States. But You've done a lot of, of traveling to China, a lot of business there. Do you, the latest news today, the, the back to the negotiating table, do you think that there is ground to be given on both sides of this? Will China give some ground? Will we give some ground? Will we come to something that's mutually beneficial at some point? I don't think anything will happen anytime soon because you've got a number of factors at play here. Don't forget Hong Kong. Hong Kong is very, very important. And you can see that some of the congressmen in Washington are really concerned about what's happening in Hong Kong. If this gets worse and for some reason the Chinese move into Hong Kong, then you could see the U.S. breaking the tie with Hong Kong, which sounds like an uh, enormous gamble, but this could happen. And that means that you have a, one big market uh, going into the doldrums. So I think we have to watch that situation very carefully, very complex, but it's uh, very, very important to understand the strategic uh, battle that's taking place between the U.S. and China. Mark, I'm sorry, can you, can you just go back and, and say that again? You could see the U.S. breaking ranks with Hong Kong, meaning, meaning what? We would say, never mind Hong Kong, well, forget about I, it because well, we're more concerned about a yeah. trade? Uh, no, because what happened, you must remember that the U.S., uh, has an act which uh, gives Hong Kong certain uh, trade and uh, investment uh, benefits. If the U.S. Congress decides, and by the way, that act is dependent upon Hong Kong being independent and not governed by China. Uh, if that is broken, then the Congress might re pull back on that act, uh, which could be very, very significant in terms of what happens to Hong Kong. So uh, the whole uh, picture of China-U.S. relations is tied up not only with trade, 
not only with uh, intellectual property, property theft and all the rest of that, but also with Hong Kong, because Hong Kong is sort of the epitome of what the U.S. wants China to be. Uh, and if uh, they move in another direction, then uh, a lot of congressmen in the U.S. will be quite unhappy. So we have to watch that very carefully. Mark, why would uh, the bond market and, and gold be positively correlated? Is it, isn't it usually sort of the opposite? It, it, you know, you're looking for inflation or, or I don't know, I, I guess fiat currencies are, are somewhat questionable, but it's not implicit that you would think that zero interest rates would cause you to buy something with no yield. Well, the situation now is that uh, with the interest rates going down to close to zero or even minus, then where do you put your money? Right. Particularly if you are very afraid of the uh, economic, political environment globally. So you rush into gold. Okay. The other factor, of course, is money supply. What is the money supply globally? Who knows? Nobody knows what it really is. Simply because you have the cryptocurrencies, you have all these countries printing like crazy in order to bring those interest rates down. So I believe a lot of people are going to think, hey, wait a minute, I'm not getting anything in the bank anyway, so why don't I go into gold as a safe haven and then look for stocks that are paying some good yield or at least some reasonable yield? Do you, and I think that's the direction that we're heading. Mark, do you think that there are cryptocurrencies that have inherent value, uh, like digital gold? Do you think Bitcoin, for example, has uh, inherent value? If there's a cryptocurrency that is really backed by gold, and that is uh, there is a meaningful agreement and uh, uh, some kind of monitoring of this connection, uh, then this could be quite interesting. That it would be, be a global uh, currency. That, that's but not I don't what, see any yeah, of them that, yet. That would be a no then, that's what you're telling me, because there, there are people that think that, that <laughs> yeah. blockchain right. itself uh, imbues the... Uh, the asset with inherent value, which is, which is that why they, they call it digital gold. But, I mean, we, we seem to be okay with a lot of fiat currencies that aren't backed by gold. Uh, you know, I, I don't know. I, I guess it's the full faith and credit of the government, but nothing's backed by gold anymore except ETFs. Or I don't know. I, I mean, why, why, why would... That's right. If, that, if you needed something backed yeah. by gold, why would yeah. you have any faith in any fiat currency then? <laughs> No, the bottom line is that there's a whole generation of people who have faith in the Internet. They have faith in these cryptocurrencies. That's yeah, all it right. takes. Uh, the reason why people believe in the U.S. dollar is because they have faith right. that with dollars in their hands, they can buy something. So the degree to which a cryptocurrency can enable you to buy something and you believe that to be the case, then it's, it's fine. But I think people are going to begin to realize that these are very, very risky situations. And by the way, I believe blockchain is a very high risk uh, situation. You know, a lot of people say, oh, blockchain can't be uh, uh, broken into. No, it can be. Anything that's created by man can be broken into, and it could create a big crisis. So I think we have to be very careful with mm. blockchain. Uh, Mark, very quickly, just you said look for stocks that you think have a reasonable dividend. What's a reasonable dividend? Gene? got any of those names that you throw out? Well, nowadays, I would say, you know, if we can get 2 3% yield, that's great. Uh, there are a number of stocks that do better than that, but uh, uh, that would be a reasonable yield uh, to have. Thank you for your time. It is great to see you.